Hey, this is Ryan with Amtech. I'm here to talk with you today about counteroffers. Counteroffers, that's a scary word. It's something that if you're hiring as a company right now, you're dealing with a whole heck of a lot. Unemployment's really low. Virtually everybody who's talented, who's desirable for your company is probably working somewhere else right now. And that means you're gonna experience negotiation, you're gonna experience counteroffers. This isn't gonna go away. And so I wanted to pass along a few tips for maybe how to make this process a little clearer and hopefully a little bit more successful for you. We've got a couple candidates recently that have gotten counter offers. One of them, really huge offer that they accepted from our client and then got an even larger counter offer from their current employer. That person stayed where they were at and accepted the counter offer. The second, the story was the same, the result was different. Why did this person not take the counter offer and the other person did? Maybe some of these tips can help solve that problem for us. First tip on counter offers. Again, I said it's kind of a bad word, it's kind of a scary word, but really, counter offers are good. If you're hiring in a market like this, the reality is, is that good candidates are gonna get counter offers. They're working somewhere right now and that place really enjoys them, really values them, thinks they're a good person to have around. And so their company tries to keep them. Honestly, more often than not, that's a good sign. So don't be scared. It means you're targeting the right type of talent. Counter offers are gonna happen and it's not always a bad sign. Second thing I would say to you is make good offers. In my personal life, I could be a little frugal. My wife might call it cheap. And I know everybody wants to get a good deal on something. You want to get a good deal when hiring a candidate. If a candidate's asking for 90,000 and you offer 88, the message is so much more than 2,000 bucks. The message is, we don't quite believe in you. We don't quite like you. And you don't want to send that message, especially in a market like this. I would make good, strong offers from the get-go. I wouldn't play games. I wouldn't try as hard to get a deal. Match their asking salary. If you can, go a little bit above that and the negotiation will go more smoothly. The third thing I would say to you is treat people well. Oftentimes when candidates are interviewing, they're doing so for quality of life issues. They're doing so for company culture reasons. The stories I told you earlier where one candidate accepted a counter offer and one declined, the candidate who declined the counter offer did so because the company he interviewed with treated him really, really well. He mentioned that to me on the phone. If that was different, maybe the result would have been different. So treat people well. Recruiting is not just about offering the highest salary. Oftentimes it's about offering the next best stop in their career and that goes well beyond money. The fourth thing I would say to you is don't be afraid to negotiate but do so one time. We've got some customers in the past that have viewed it as evil or shady when a candidate tries to negotiate their offer, but don't be afraid to negotiate one time with candidates. On the other end of the spectrum, don't go back and forth and back and forth tweaking this variable and that variable. If a candidate continues to negotiate three, four, five times, it means they don't want the job. If a candidate wants to negotiate, ask them what they will accept and get as close to that figure as you can. And and go above it if possible. Don't get in a long back and forth, but don't be afraid to move the needle a little bit to try to attract the right person to your team. The fifth thing I would say to you is, if it doesn't go well, if the candidate declines your offer, move on. There's no use in mourning. There's no use in tearing your clothes and crying in your beer here. Just move on and get started finding the right person. That candidate is not the only one that can do the job. They're not the only one that can match your organization. If they decline the offer, then dust yourself off, learn a lesson, and move on finding the right candidate. And finally, the last thing I would say, and this may sound a little bit self-serving, is use a good, honest recruiter to help. A good, honest recruiter oftentimes is getting information from the candidate that's very valuable to you in a negotiation. And they're doing the same thing for candidates as well. A good and honest recruiter is not gonna play games, not gonna pull strings, but they're gonna make things more clear both for you and the candidate. And hopefully that leads to a higher acceptance rate on your offers. This is Ryan with Amtech. Thanks for watching. <laughs>